Hi everyone! Today is all about growing peppers, one of my favorite vegetables to grow. They come in all sorts of colors, shapes, sizes, sweet and spicy hot, and I love growing them all and I know you do too. I've compiled some of my past videos on growing peppers into this one episode so you have everything you need to grow them successfully all in one place. Now many of you have mentioned how you're enjoying these longer format compilation videos so you don't have to look all over for the information that you need but you have everything you need in one place on a certain topic. This video is a complete guide on growing peppers from seed to harvest and covers starting seeds indoors, a special tip to help peppers germinate faster, getting peppers transplanted in your garden, fertilizing, pruning them for bushier growth, overwintering them, freezing them, harvesting peppers, and a special recipe for pepper jelly at the very end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. To get the most out of this video, use the digital table of contents in the video description and just click and watch the sections you're most interested in. No matter what color of peppers you like to grow, whether you like them sweet or spicy hot like I do, when you're done watching this video, you'll know exactly how to grow them from seed to harvest. And you'll be harvesting some of your own in your own backyard before you know it. Comment below, let me know what you learned from this video, what variety of peppers you're going to be growing. Share this video with a friend and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you at the end of the video. We are gonna plant peppers today. I like to start them from seed. You can also go down to the garden center and get some plant starts. But in my opinion, starting from seed gives you the best chance for a wide variety of peppers. So let's go ahead and get started. Well today we're going to talk about choosing seeds, when and how to plant, and a special little tip for getting your seeds to germinate. So let me just go over with you some of my favorite peppers, what I'm going to be planting today. I'm planting some sweet peppers and some hot peppers. My very favorite variety of sweet pepper is called a Jimmy Nardello, and I got these seeds from Baker Creek Seed. It's a super sweet. Um, wonderful pepper. It's great for grilling. It's great for freezing. It's great for chopping up and putting in just about anything. It's very prolific. This is my favorite kind of sweet pepper. I'm also going to plant a couple varieties of hot peppers. Um, the purple jalapeno, which is super easy to grow. Again, very prolific, very mildly hot. And this beautiful five color pepper plant, which is super fire hot, but it grows beautifully, beautiful peppers, five different colors. And honestly, I use it more for an ornamental plant. Pull off a few peppers every now and then to throw in my salsa, but it's a beautiful ornamental pepper plant. So that's what I'm gonna be planting. There's a million different pepper seeds out there. Just go online to some seed company or even go Go to the local garden center and choose what, whatever peppers you would like to grow. I'm going to grow three different varieties. Now, how I like to do it, if you've been following the first garden series, the quickest, easiest, simplest way for me to do it is in these little peat pellets. And again, there's many different ways you can do it. This is just how I prefer, but do it however you want. Gardening is all about being flexible, experimenting with what works for you and your climate and your preferences. This is just what I prefer. So I'm not going to go over how to hydrate the peat pellets. You can go back and catch that on, on a previous video. This is so simple to do. I'm actually going to be growing some seeds that I harvested last summer from my um, pepper plant. So I have them here in a little baggie. These happen to be the purple jalapenos. So. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and drop a couple of seeds in each little peat pellet. I'm just dropping two seeds in each peat pellet. That way if one doesn't germinate, hopefully the other one will. And then I'm just going to lightly cover up the seed. It's my little toothpick here. Super easy, just push it down into the soil. And there you go. We'll go ahead and get those um, planted out and I'll come back and share with you the next step. Okay, I've got my peppers planted and I just planted one row of each. So that is, let's see, five um, peat pellets of each type of pepper. And I always like to plant plenty because you never know when one might die off. I always like to have backups. So it's a good idea to plant extra. That way if they all live, you don't need all of them. You can just give them to a friend, which is what I like to do too. So I've, I've gone ahead and gotten my peppers started. Now, just a little note about when to start your pepper seeds. If you're, if, if you're watching this in the winter time, it might be a little soon to start your pepper seeds, but you want to start them indoors about eight to 10 weeks before your last frost date. That way it gives them a really nice start 
indoors and I am going to be growing these indoors. Today I'm outdoors because I just love the sunny weather out here. Wanted to just bring you guys some warmth here from California, but you want to start them indoors about 10 weeks before your last frost date. Now, a little tip on planting pepper seeds and getting them to germinate. Something that I found is really key is bottom heat. Now these plants I planted, or these pepper plants right here, I planted about three weeks ago and I got them to germinate by using this heat mat. Now peppers are a tropical plant and they will only germinate in about 75 to 80 degree temperatures. So this heat mat is pretty inexpensive. I got it for about $15 on Amazon, which to me is well worth the investment because it's gonna grow me peppers and I don't have to spend money at the grocery store now on peppers. So you can get a heat mat if you want from Amazon or from your local garden center. What I've used before too is just a heating pad, although it's hard to get the constant heat with heating pad, but I have germinated peppers before with a heating pad and also on top of my stove just by turning it on warm. So whatever you can do to get peppers, bottom heat on peppers, they definitely will germinate quicker if they have bottom heat. So I'm gonna take this indoors, put it on my heat mat, and they will take though a week or two to germinate. So just keep that in mind when you're planting your pepper seeds. Hi everyone, well today I'm gonna to share with you three very simple ways that you can get indoor grow lights set up so that when it comes time to start your seeds inside for your spring garden in just a few months, you'll be ready. Now if you're one of those people who are confused about how to set up indoor grow lights, don't worry about it, you're not alone. In this video, we're gonna break it down, make it very easy for you, including explaining what lumens and Kelvin are. So if you're confused about that, make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna show you my indoor grow light setup, and by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to get yours going inside as well. I know many of you are already dreaming about your spring garden and are busy picking out your seeds, planning what you're gonna grow them in, and are going to get a head start by starting your seeds indoors. One of the most important factors to consider when growing indoor vegetable seedlings is light. It's so important to have the right kind of light to grow your plants healthy and strong so that they are ready to be planted outside when the time comes. Often a sunny windowsill is just not enough to grow strong, healthy seedlings. What the seedlings do is they stretch towards the sun and become leggy. And a leggy seedling is not a strong seedling. You want a seedling with a strong, stocky, healthy stem so that when it comes time to plant out in the garden, it is strong enough to withstand the wind and the elements and will grow you lots of wonderful vegetables for you and your family to eat. If you're going to take the time to start your vegetable seedlings indoors, the best way to make sure they are strong and healthy when it comes time to move them out into the garden is to grow them under indoor lights. You can't just use any old type of light bulb. You do need to use a special kind of light that has the right amount of Kelvin and lumens to grow your transplants healthy and strong. When you're shopping for indoor grow light bulbs, you'll often see three specifications on the package, lumens, Kelvin, and watts. It's really important to have the right amount of lumens and Kelvin so that your transplants go really nice and strong. So let's just break it down and make it very simple. Well, first of all, let's talk about lumens. Lumens is simply a measure of brightness of the light. The higher the lumens, the brighter the light. The lower the lumens, the dimmer the light. And when you're growing vegetable seedlings, it's very important that they're met with a very bright, intense light as soon as they germinate. So lumens are what pounds are to tomatoes, what a gallon is to milk. It's simply a way to measure the brightness of the light. So when you're growing vegetable seedlings, it's very important that you have about a 2,000 to 3,000 lumen level on your light bulb. And you can usually find this information on the back of the package. Now, this this particular light is a little bit under 2000, it's 1600, but I have used these lights many times to grow indoor vegetable seedlings, and although a brighter light would be a little bit better, these also work just fine. The next specification you'll find on the back of your grow light bulb package is Kelvin. Kelvin simply refers to the type of light produced or the color temperature, and grow lights need to mimic daylight. So the measurement on the back here shows 6,500, which is really good, between 4,500 and 6,500 mimic daylight. So again, the higher the number, the better. So look for a number between 45 and 6,500 so that your seedlings are nice and strong and stocky. 
The third specification, one that many of you are probably already familiar with, is watts. Now, like I mentioned earlier, watts is simply a measurement of the electricity used. So you really don't need to be too concerned about that when you're purchasing bulbs for growing indoors. Really the lumens and the Kelvin are the most important thing to look for so that your seedlings are nice and strong. There's many ways to set up indoor grow lights. So let's head inside. I'll show you the three really simple ways that I have mine set up and you can choose which one works best for you. The first indoor grow light is one of my favorites because it's so simple and perfect for a beginner. It's this very easy clamp light. Now I love this, no assembly required. The light bulb just screws in and out. Perfect for a small space. It'll clip under your countertop, onto a table, onto a shelf. And these are readily available. You can find them at hardware stores, Target or Walmart. I'll also pop a link down in the video description. Now, how I'm using it here is I've got a gallon jug filled with sand, PVC pipe in it, clip it on, turn it on, and there you go. You got an instant grow light system. You can move it up and down as the plants grow. A couple little tips here. In this clamp light, I'm using one of these CFL bulbs that I showed you earlier. You can also use an LED bulb, but keep in mind, although that's more energy efficient in the long run, your upfront costs will be higher. So I'm keeping my costs really low up front by using the CFL bulbs and these work just great. Now, the thing to remember when you're growing indoor plants with your grow lights is to keep your grow light about an inch or two away from the plants that you're growing. Otherwise, we get that legginess I told you about earlier and we don't want that because we want our seedlings to be nice and strong. So you can direct the light up and down and it's perfect for growing this nice little tray of microgreens. I mean, look at these. Don't these look fabulous? Now, another way I really like to use this clamp light, a lot of you have done this from the first garden series or from the $10 garden series, is with a grow light box. Now, this is so handy. It keeps all your seedlings contained in this box. And you may have seen this also over on Gary, over at the Rusted Gardens channel. I got the idea originally from him. I'll put a pop-up link on to a video on how to build it. But basically, it's just lined with aluminum foil and the clamp light keeps the light directed right down onto the seedlings. So it's a really handy way to get started and it's very inexpensive. The second setup that I love to use is this shop light setup. Now you need two things for this, a four foot shop light and then some bulbs. Now you can use T8 light bulbs or T5 light bulbs, but I happen to have bought a big contractor's pack of the T12, so I'm gonna use what I have. Now the T12, T5, and T8, don't let that confuse you, it simply refers to the size or the diameter of the light bulb. So the T12s and the T8s work great. The T5s, the light is a lot more intense, but those light bulbs are also more expensive. So I'm sticking with the T12s for now. One thing I forgot to mention about these T12 lights, 2,500 lumens, so we're good on the lumens, and the Kelvins are 500K. So we're good on both lumens and Kelvin with these T12 lights. So this is super easy to get set up. You can set it up on a nice shelving unit or in a closet on shelves if you have that available to you. But I have just set it up super simple, super quick. Again, I've got my gallon jugs here filled with sand, PVC pipe stuck in the middle, and I use the little chains that come with the shop lights just to hang them from the PVC pipes and direct the light down towards my plants. Now, you'll see, of course, that I raise my plants up with these shoe boxes while they're teeny tiny, a couple of bricks, because remember, you don't want your plants to be what? To be leggy, that's right, you guys are learning. And as the plants grow, I can move the bricks out of the way, move the shoe boxes out of the way, so that um, there's enough room for the plants underneath the light. So this may not be a super pretty setup, but it's a setup that you can easily do at home. It's very inexpensive and you can get those spring garden seeds started. The third indoor grow light setup that I really like to use is this really simple tabletop grow light setup. This one's made by Fairy Morris. You can get it at most hardware stores and I'll also link it up in the video description. It comes in this nice, neat little package. So the advantage to this is if you're a beginner, everything is in here. You got the light, you got the little handy dandy stand, 
does require some assembly, but it pretty much takes the guesswork out of it. Now this one has one of those T5 bulbs I was telling you about. It doesn't specify the lumens and the Kelvin on the package, but it's a nice, bright, intense light. And let me just show you how much smaller the T5 bulb is as compared to the T12 bulb that I used in the, in the previous setup. It's a lot more uh, smaller in diameter. So this little setup is about two feet long and it works great again if you're growing a small amount of plants. It's growing this lettuce little salad container of lettuce greens absolutely beautifully. Now the cool thing is too, if you have two of them, you can kind of put them together here. It does interlock really nicely and that way it provides a lot of really nice intense light for your plants. Now the only drawback to this is they're a little bit pricey. I think these run around $45 or so on Amazon or at your hardware store. So if you're on a tight budget, you might wanna start with one of the other two setups and then move up to this one if your budget allows. Well, the other thing that's really important when you're doing an indoor grow light setup is to have a timer. It's super important that you don't have to think about when to turn your lights on and turn them off because if you forget, again, your plants won't have enough light and they're going to be leggy. <laughs> you guys are doing really good on this. Now, the amount of time that you leave your indoor grow lights on is this. When you first start your seedlings, they're gonna take a couple of days to germinate. But I like to leave mine on about 24 hours until they germinate. So just in case those little seedlings poke through the soil when you're in bed, they're gonna be met by a super bright burst of intense light. And that way they'll keep on growing nice and strong. And after that, after they germinate, you wanna leave them on about 18 hours a day and off for about six hours during the night. So the schedule of 18 hours on and six hours off is just the right amount to grow nice, strong, healthy seedlings. So that pretty soon when the weather warms up and you're ready to put them in the garden, they are gonna be ready. Well, there you have it. Three super simple, easy, quick, simple, inexpensive indoor grow light setups and Kelvin and Lumens explained. But today what I want to talk about on the video is transplanting the peppers and the basil that you also started from seed. Mine I started about, I don't know, six or eight weeks ago. I don't remember exactly when, but they're definitely ready to go into my little cups. So you can see how well they're doing. They're growing nice and tall, a little bit leggy. I have been hardening them off. So let's go ahead and get a couple of these planted in cups just so you can see how I like to do it. Now it's pretty much the same technique as we did with the tomatoes. So um, we got all our materials here. I've got my potting soil, which is already pre-moistened. I actually am using some styrofoam cups this time because they're a little bit easier to um, get the holes in the bottom of them. And this time I used a drill rather than a nail and a hammer. It just was a lot quicker to go in and pre-drill the holes. You can pretty much do a stack of four or five all at once. Okay, remember the first garden series is about quick, simple, and inexpensive. Now, I just buy pre-bagged potting soil because I do like to keep it quick and simple. It's also fairly inexpensive to buy pre-bagged potting soil. The same thing with the cups. That really makes it inexpensive as well. And the styrofoam cups are actually a lot cheaper than the red plastic cups. Even better. So here we're going to grab one of my seedlings. And this one happens to be a golden Marconi and um, I have written the name on it here because I don't want to forget what type of pepper I'm growing. If it's sweet or hot, I want to put it, you know, kind of separate in a separate part of the garden. So these roots, um, you can tell they're definitely ready to be planted. There's lots of roots sticking out here from the peat pellet. And I'm just going to go ahead again. We're using the same technique we used before with the tomatoes where I'm going to go ahead and take the netting right off here. And peppers also, the same way as, as tomatoes, you want to plant them deep um, because it will make them nice and sturdy and they will continue to grow. It's not going to bother them if you plant, plant it like up to the first set of leaves. So I just put a tiny little bit of potting soil in my cup. I'm going to go ahead and put this pepper in here really deeply and cover up that stem with some more potting soil. So easy, so quick, so simple, so inexpensive and this pepper is going to be great in the garden. It's going to produce for me. These golden Marconis are absolutely beautiful peppers. A nice golden color, very sweet, great for grilling. And um, in a couple of weeks, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to prune them and I'll definitely bring you back for that. But all I did here was put some potting soil in, kind of pressed it down because this potting soil will really settle. And I don't even really have to water it right away because I already pre-moistened the potting soil. So I'll let it get used to its new home for a couple of days before I give it some more water. 
So that's pretty much it guys for the peppers. Super easy, super quick, super inexpensive, really not much more to it. If you planted your tomatoes already, you're used to this technique and you're, you're well on your way to having a great garden full of peppers. Now let me just pull out one of my basil um, pellets here to show you how wonderful this basil looks. This looks absolutely beautiful. It smells incredible. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same technique to go ahead and get some of my basil transplanted as well. And then we're going to come back and show you my nice tray here of what I have ready to grow, ready to put in the garden in a couple of weeks. Okay guys, well I went ahead and potted up five peppers and five basil. I've got some Jimmy Nardello's, Golden Marconi's, and this five color pepper. And I just want to show you guys this five color pepper. I absolutely love, <laughs> there goes our reflector. <laughs> it's a windy day, okay? Anyway, I absolutely love the leaves on this, guys. The, it, the color is absolutely beautiful. You can see here that it's purple and green. They're so pretty. And this plant is absolutely gorgeous. Once it gets loaded down with little tiny peppers, if you plant this, you're not going to believe how beautiful this plant is. It's absolutely gorgeous, very ornamental. The peppers are super hot, so beware. So I got those potted up, and then my favorite, Jimmy Nardello. Hope you guys are growing this too, because this pepper is amazing on the grill. Absolutely incredible. I love it. And then two different varieties of basil. Now something interesting here about the basil is this plant is getting kind of tall and I'm going to come back in a week or so and show you guys how you can prune your basil even when it's this small to get a nice strong bushy plant. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. So Hi everyone. Well today we're going to talk about how to grow peppers. Now peppers are one of my very favorite garden vegetables to grow. I love coming outside seeing the stunning burst of color that they add to my garden. They're so delicious when you grow them in your own backyard. There's so many different varieties you can grow from seed, and you're gonna love growing peppers too. Come on, let me show you how easy it is to grow peppers. Well, peppers are a warm weather plant and you can start them indoors about six to eight weeks before your last frost date. I started these about 10 weeks ago indoors. They've been hardening off and now they're ready to go into the ground. And I'm gonna plant them here next to some other pepper plants that actually overwintered for me this year and are just starting to put on new leaves and new buds. So peppers like to be planted together and this is a perfect spot. They get six to eight hours of sun, actually more sun in the summertime. It's a very warm spot in my garden and peppers always do very well here. So let's get to planting. Well peppers really like warm soil and one mistake a lot of people make is planting peppers too soon. They put them outside right after the frost date, the last frost date of the season, and the soil just isn't warm enough for the peppers. Peppers really like warm soil. They like nighttime temperatures of about 60 degrees. If you put them outside too early it can stunt their growth and they just won't produce well for you. I've made that mistake before and if you want to see a video with more on that, watch Don't Push the Peppers. I'll put a pop-up link to it right above and you can see my mistake and how I corrected it. When you're planting peppers, something to keep in mind is that they really like a deep root zone. So I've dug down here in this garden bed about a foot deep to loosen up the soil. The soil looks really, really good and peppers are also heavy feeders. So I'm going to add some compost and some other nutrients to the soil to give them what they need to produce a really good crop for me. So I'm going to add some nice compost to the soil to help feed the pepper plants. Put about an inch of compost or so into the soil. Compost is pretty dry so I'm just going to moisten it up. So it's nice and moist when I put the peppers in. And then we're going to add a couple of things that I really like to add to my pepper planting hole. One of them being Epsom salt, and which is magnesium sulfate. So it just really helps the pepper plants be nice and green and produce really well. I put it in the hole at the planting time, kind of mix it up a couple of tablespoons. Then I like to add a really nice organic fertilizer that gives the plant plenty of nutrients throughout the growing season. And my favorite is Trifecta Plus has all kinds of good nutrients for the pepper plants. I'm going to add about three tablespoons because peppers are a heavy feeder. And I'm going to mix it in the soil, not just let it sit on top, but mix it in so it gets in there and all the soil is full of good nutrients for the pepper plant. Okay, now that we got our additives in, I'm going to go ahead and put the pepper in. 
Now that we have our soil prepared, it's time to plant our pepper. And I like to space my pepper plants about a foot apart. You can see there's a pepper plant right here. I'm going to put it about a foot away from that. And the reason for that is because peppers tend to develop something called sun scald. When the weather gets really warm, they get these unsightly kind of burned spots on them. If you plant them a foot apart, they tend to shade each other and it really cuts down on the amount of sun scald. So I'm planting them pretty close together, but that really seems to help. So I'm just gonna dump my pot upside down and I like to hold the stems in between my fingers. You never wanna pull on the stems because that will break them possibly. You definitely don't wanna do that after all this work from growing it from seed indoors. Just dump it out. And this one's looking good. It has some really nice roots on the bottom. It's absolutely perfect time to plant it. So we'll just simply turn it upside down. And we're not gonna plant it super deep like you would a tomato. I'm just gonna set it down in here I'm going to fill in the hole with the soil that I already dug out until the soil is just slightly above the surface of the plant. I might need to add a little more soil here, a little more compost, which is actually good to add some more. That way when you water, all the nutrients soak down to the roots and your pepper is going to be off to a really good start. Now let's talk about watering your pepper plant. Peppers actually need about an inch of water a week, which equates to about a half a gallon. Now, you want to make sure you water your pepper plants from the bottom so they don't get any diseases. You can water with a hose like I'm doing right now, or you can see I actually put them right next to my drip irrigation line, which is really a good way to water them because they like really deep watering. I'm going to add a little dripper here so that whenever I water this whole planter with my drip irrigation, this pepper will get the water that it needs as well. So let me just talk a little bit about the kind of support that peppers need. Now peppers will definitely need some support as they grow because the plants do tend to get very heavy with the peppers. And a couple of different ways I like to support my pepper plants are with these store-bought tomato cages. Now definitely don't use them for tomatoes, they're not big enough for that, but they work very well for peppers. But they're not super pretty to use in the garden. So another thing I like to use is just these really simple bamboo poles. You can see I've got some behind me here and the pepper plants that I already have in the garden. But I do like to go ahead and install them when I plant because what I found is if I don't do it right away, sometimes I forget, don't get back to it, and then I have to go back in and put them in later and I don't want to damage the roots of the peppers. So as the pepper grows, I love this little stretchy tie tape. This stuff is so handy. I usually always have it in my pocket when I'm walking around the garden. Super easy just to break a piece off and just very simply tie the pepper plant right to the bamboo pole and you can do this as it grows throughout the growing season to give the pepper just that little bit of support that it needs so it doesn't fall over and blow around in the wind when it's heavy with beautiful colorful peppers. The last thing I'm going to do to finish off planting my pepper is just to move this wood chip and leaf mulch over that I moved out of the way when I dug the hole to cover up my pepper plant so that the water doesn't evaporate as quickly. It'll really help during the hot weather. And I can always add more as the pepper grows. Hi everyone. Well, I have something really funny to share with you guys today. Actually, it's not funny. It's pretty embarrassing. These are my pepper plants. Now, they are so stunted. They've got a virus. They've been in these little cups since the 21st of March and I don't think they've grown at all. I made a big mistake with these guys. I got them outside too early and you just can't push the peppers. I put them outside when it was still in the 40s at night here. Believe it or not, it does get in the 40s. And they just got stunted. It was too soon for them, too cold for them. They like it warm and they got attacked by a virus. They're just not looking good. These guys are history. So I'm really embarrassed about it, but I just want you guys to know I make mistakes too. I pushed it with these, but the good news is got something else over here to show you. So this is the first batch and this is the second batch. Now these I did right. I started them indoors. I've been growing them indoors for about six weeks and I transitioned them into these little red cups. It's only been about 10 days ago and I cannot believe the growth. It's amazing. They actually looked like this. These, these ones I haven't transitioned in the cups yet about 10 days ago and look at the growth. The difference is a couple of things. I used a different potting soil and I've been very slowly hardening them off. 
Now the nights are still in the 50s yet, so I'm not gonna rush it. I'm gonna get them nice and big and strong before I put them outdoors, probably in a couple of weeks. But what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna prune off the tips so that they branch out rather than up. And you can see this one here is getting really lanky. It's got about three sets of adult leaves and all I'm going to do to help it encourage it to branch out is pinch off this very top set of adult leaves. Just pinch it off with my fingers and that will cause little leaves and new growth to branch out to the side instead of grow up. So these pepper plants will be nice and bushy and strong. By the time I get them in the garden, there's nothing going to get my pepper plants. Well, just having a little bit of fun today, guys. If you make a mistake, it's no big deal. Just start over. There's still plenty of time left in the growing season. Just keep it fun. Have a great time out in the garden. And the important thing is just keep on growing whatever you do. Hi everyone. I just love being out here. I just love it. The colors are so beautiful. I love seeing the plants. Don't you guys? Oh, I love it. Well, today I'm just out here picking some kale for my dinner. So much fun just to come out and pick what I'm gonna eat for dinner. I'm also gonna pick some peppers, but before I do that, I wanna to talk to you guys about something I like to call my summer pepper boost, just to help my plants get through the heat of the summer and to feed them so they produce well all summer long. Well, before we talk about the summer pepper boost, I wanted to show you guys something very interesting about these two pepper plants. Now, you may have remembered my video, You Can't Push the Peppers, and if you missed that, I'll put a little link to it right up above here that'll pop up and you can go back and catch that. But these two plants here, I grew from seed. In fact, all of these peppers here I grew from seed. But what I did in that video is something really interesting, is on this albino pepper plant here, I trimmed off or pruned off the growing tip. And the purpose of that is, so it has a lower center of gravity, which you can see, it's exactly how it worked. It's low to the ground and it pushed leaves out to the side. So this is gonna be a perfect plant in our windy, usually fall season that we get and winter season because it's not gonna fall over. I don't have to pr or, uh, stake it up. As opposed to this one here, the Golden Marconi, which these are beautiful, big red peppers. They're gonna turn gold eventually. They're absolutely fabulous on the grill. But this one here, it's, it's really tall, pretty wobbly, and I'm gonna have to stake it up to support it, and hopefully it won't fall over and break in the wind. So I think next year I may end up pruning off all of my peppers from the start, so I have a nice low center of gravity like this one. Okay, now let's talk about our summer pepper boost. But before we get to that, I'm gonna stake these plants up so they have plenty of support in the wind. And I'm just gonna use what I have on hand. A couple of things I really like to use are these little bamboo poles you can get pretty much at any hardware store. And these actually I'm kind of excited about using. These other little uh, stakes are actually um, sticks from sunflowers I grew last summer. So I just, when it was time to pull them out, just laid them aside, dried them, and now I'm gonna use them to stake up my peppers, so it's perfect. I have this plant in front here that I'm gonna use the sunflower stakes for. Guys, if you've watched my channel for very long, you know that Jimmy Nardello's are my absolute favorite kind of pepper. And one reason I love being out here in my little pepper patch is to see my Jimmy Nardello's. You can see this plant is falling over and needs some staking. But look at these guys. Look at that. Look at all these beautiful red <laughs> Jimmy Nardello's. I'm just thinking about these on the grill. They are fabulous. Mixed with a little olive oil, sprinkled with salt and pepper and garlic. But you know what? Today we're here to talk about summer pepper boost. So let me get these staked up first. Just gonna go ahead and put these steaks right in the ground. Okay, so I got this one staked up with just the bamboo pole. And with this one, because it's so tall, what I did is I wrapped my stretchy tape just around the entire plant, secured it to the pole. Doesn't need like a ton of support like a tomato. It's not gonna be that heavy, but it definitely helps it. Even today is kind of a breezy day and it helps it to not just like fall over in the wind. And I may need to even put a stronger support in later as it grows more. 
Okay, now to the pepper boost. Super simple, just need two things, Epsom salt, there we go, and some compost tea. And if you've never used compost tea before, you've got to start using it in your garden. It's so easy to make. I'll pop a little link up there to a video so that you can go and watch and make it for yourself. Your plants are going to love it. Epsom salt I love because it's super cheap. You can buy it anywhere. You might even have some under your bathroom cabinet, which is even better because it means your entire summer pepper boost will be free. Okay, this is all you do guys, it's so simple. Just take um, some Epsom salt here. You're gonna need maybe a couple tablespoons per plant, but you know what, don't measure it, just grab a handful. Okay, you're going to simply sprinkle it around the bottom of your plant, like that. And then all you're gonna do is just water it in with your compost tea. Super simple and it's something anyone can do and you'll be surprised at how this helps your plants. You can use it on any garden plant. The peppers and tomatoes especially love it. To me, it just seems like the day after I do this, the plants look greener, they look lusher, they're producing more fruit, they're producing more blossoms. It's a super easy, quick way that you can give your plants what they need to make it through the summer heat. So guys, let me know if you try the Summer Pepper Boost. It's so easy to do, I think you're gonna love it. Hi everyone, well I'm out here in the garden this morning just harvesting some of my peppers. I absolutely love coming out here and harvesting these. They've been so amazing this year, just super colorful, and it, we've had a lot of fun eating them. But I wanted to show you today how to prune peppers, because peppers are super easy to overwinter, especially if you live in a warm winter climate like I do. I have a couple to prune back today, and I thought you would like to see exactly how to do that. Well, the peppers are doing so well in this part of the garden. I mean, look at this harvest I just got. I'm so excited that they're still producing. We've actually had a really warm fall, so it's been an amazing fall for the peppers. But I do have some over here, another area of my garden, that are looking a little bit draggled. They've been a little neglected, honestly. I haven't really done too much with them. So I thought that would be a perfect plant to show you how to prune back. Now peppers will overwinter very easily, especially in a warm winter climate like I live here in Southern California, and a lot of times in a cold winter climate as well. So let me show you the plants I have over here. So I've got this little corner planter here off the side of one of my decks and this little pepper plant I trimmed back I think about two weeks ago. Since we've had such warm weather it's already growing some new leaves so definitely giving it some new life and look at that a little bud starting to form. So who knows I could still get some peppers out of this plant this winter time. We'll have to see how the weather goes but over here on the other side of this little planter this plant's looking a little bedraggled kind of got neglected never got over here to get it staked up. So I'm going to prune it back, which will give it some new life and also help it overwinter. So what you want to look for when you're getting ready to overwinter your pepper plants is plants that are looking kind of shabby like this one is or plants that have pretty much stopped producing. So I'm just going to clip off the few pepper plants that are still on here so I can harvest those. So I did get a small little handful from this pepper plant. And what I'm gonna do is just go in here with my pruning shears and see here there's a V in the plant where the plant kind of branches off. I'm actually gonna trim it just below that V. So I've got one big branch here I'm trimming off. This middle branch I'm gonna trim right down to about the same height. Then I've got these side branches. I'm gonna just trim off. And you pretty much wanna cut it down to the bottom. I know it looks extreme, but you know what? Pruning is really good for plants and it will help give it some new life. I'm gonna trim off a lot of these old looking leaves as well. Just get them all out of here. Those actually look pretty good, so I'm gonna leave those in. My pepper plant is looking nice and trimmed and now I'm just adding a layer of shredded leaves around it as mulch just to protect it from the cold. If it does ever get cold here. But if you do live in a cold winter area, make sure you add a really heavy layer of mulch of some kind. You can use straw 
whatever you happen to have around just to protect it from the cold. Well, hopefully this little pepper pruning tip helps your peppers over winter, especially if you live in a warm winter climate like I do. But if you do have any other pepper overwintering tips, I'd love to hear about them. Comment below, let's help each other out, grow our own food. And if you're getting a lot of cold weather where you live, make sure you stick with me here because I don't stop growing all winter long. Lots more gardening videos to come, even indoor growing tips. You're really gonna enjoy it. And I'll also send some virtual warmth your way. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone. Well, I'm headed out to the garden this morning to plant another pepper plant in my salsa garden. Now, if you're a beginning gardener, a themed garden such as a salsa garden is a super easy way to get started. It's quick and simple. You have everything you need for fresh, tasty, delicious, homegrown salsa all in one place. I mean, it really couldn't get any better than that. So I want to show you around my salsa garden today and then bring you along as I plant this beautiful keystone giant pepper plant. Let's go take a look. I planted my salsa garden here on my deck. Now you might recognize this if you followed my fall garden series on cool weather vegetables and containers. And right now I'm in the process of just changing it over from cool weather vegetables to warm weather vegetables. Now of course usually you want your warm weather vegetables to be all in the sun but it's a pretty hot day today, so I had to put this umbrella up so I could get the video filmed without getting completely crispy sunburned. <laughs> so let me show you where my salsa garden is. I have it over here in this purple Smart Pots. This is uh, called a Big Bag Raised Bed, and it has 13 square feet of growing space. Uh, besides giving you extra growing space, this color is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It makes a color splash in the garden. It's so pretty. So let's go in for a closer look, and I'll show you what I have growing here. So right smack dab in the center, I put a really nice Chadwick cherry tomato plant. I staked it up on, I believe it's about a five foot stake here. And this is a gorgeous tomato. It seems to be um, growing very, very well. Got some tomatoes coming on right here. So I'm hoping those will ripen up real soon. Looking forward to the harvest on that. And then on one side, I planted some hot peppers. I've got three different varieties here. I've got a purple jalapeno and actually two lemon drop peppers over there on the sides and some beautiful onions. I love these onions. This is a red burgundy onion. You can see there it's starting to bulb up. It's so pretty. And then a white sweet Spanish onion. So I packed it full of onions in here. And then on the other side, I put some sweet peppers. I've got three of my favorite varieties in here, the California Wonder, which is a gorgeous pepper from the $10 Garden Seed Kit, a Jimmy Nardello pepper, a beautiful is one of my favorites, a beautiful red pepper, absolutely sweet as well, delicious on the grill, wonderful in salsa, and then one of my favorite, a thick-walled, large yellow pepper, a Golden Marconi, absolutely beautiful varieties. There's so many different things you can plant in a salsa garden. This is just a small little sampling, but I always like to tell people, grow what you like to eat. If you're not a hot pepper person, then by all means, just grow sweet peppers. And you might even have all the seeds that you need to get started with a salsa garden already in your seed collection. But if you don't, check out my Gardener's Salsa Kit. It's a really easy way to get started, everything in one place. And I actually think he might be out of his kit right now. But check it out. I'll put a link on the screen in, in the video description. You can get it for 10% off by going through those links. And if he is out, just check out the items individually and purchase the ones that you want individually. There's a couple different varieties of onions. The red burgundy onion and the white Spanish onion that I showed you. Um, a Roma tomato, which is a beautiful tomato that's nice and meaty, not too juicy for salsa. Tomatillos are a great addition to a salsa garden and cilantro you can't have salsa without cilantro now i don't have any planted in here because cilantro likes the cool weather just too hot down here for cilantro right now i do have some up on my deck where it's cooler and more shaded right next to my back door and these two peppers which i'm going to plant today this keystone giant keystone resistant giant pepper it's called so i'm going to get one planted today and also because i love hot peppers a habanero pepper so here is a habanero pepper, nice and spicy. We're going to get that going as well, a beautiful orange pepper. Now, corn is something that I would highly recommend planting for a salsa garden. I don't have any planted. I'm just a little bit short on space right now. Hopefully, I can find some room in my garden somewhere for corn. So I'd highly recommend corn as well. Now, besides the seeds to help you get started with your salsa garden, I've also written an ebook called Growing Five Warm Weather Vegetables Made Easy. It would be a great resource for you, especially for the warm weather growing coming up. 
It's all about how to grow tomatoes, peppers, squash, eggplant, and cucumbers. Now the pepper section, which is one of my favorite sections in here, is got beautiful colors of my pepper harvest last year. And the whole ebook has tips on how to grow all those warm weather vegetables. A lot more in depth than I'm able to go in the videos here. So just wanna invite you to head over to my website. There'll be a link on the screen and to check that book out. Now let's get some peppers planted. I am gonna plant one more pepper here in my salsa garden. And the great thing about the smart pots is that you can really pack the plants in. Because the fabric is aerated, it means that it does something called root pruning. So the roots actually reach the sides of the pot and instead of becoming wound up and root bound, they turn the other direction and form a nice fibrous root system. So I like to pack it in here and planting a pepper plant is so easy. Now the soil is already nice and loose. So I'm just gonna simply move aside the shredded leaf mulch that I have here. I'm gonna dig a hole. I mean, it really couldn't be easier in a container. It's really a super easy way to grow. Just gonna dig a hole a little bit larger than the container my plant is in. And I did start this plant from seed about, I think it was about six weeks ago indoors. So I've got my hole dug. Before I put my plant in, I'm gonna add some Vermisteria worm castings, just a couple of tablespoons. And these are the Vermisteria worm castings. And I put the Trifecta Plus organic fertilizer. Really gets my peppers off to a great start gives them everything they need to feed them right away, and then it also feeds them long-term. Just gonna mix around that, those good organic nutrients down there in the hole. I'm gonna take my pepper plant, grasp it by the stem, turn the container over, then gently squeeze it. Whew, this thing's ready to be planted. Look at these roots. Looks beautiful. Put it down in the hole here, the planting hole. Just fill the hole with soil. Put all that good fertilizer around the roots, which will help get it going right away. I'm gonna put a label in it so I don't forget that it's that hot habanero. And you notice I've got some small tomato cages supporting my pepper plants. And tomato cages that you buy from the garden center don't work very well to support tomatoes, but they do work great to support peppers. So I like to get my tomato cages put over my pepper plants when I plant them because otherwise it's much too difficult to install later on and you could risk damaging the roots. So the last thing to do is just to water it, giving it a nice dose of worm tea, the Vermisteria worm tea. And all of my transplants have been doing fabulously with um, these organic fertilizers I've been adding to it. Give it a nice little drink to get it going and get it nice and perked up. I'm also going to plant my uh, sweet pepper, my Keystone sweet pepper over in this other little mini smart pots that I have going on. Um, I already have two other peppers planted there, but there'll be enough room here for the sweet pepper. So we'll get that planted and then we'll come back to wrap it up. I'm super excited to have two new varieties of peppers planted in my salsa garden. Now make sure you subscribe because this is gonna be absolutely beautiful once it starts producing oh, all those colors of peppers and tomatoes. So I'll bring you along for that, and I'll definitely bring you along as I make some fresh, tasty salsa. All the links will be in the video description below on all the supplies you need to get your salsa garden going. Comment down below. Let me know if you're going to grow a salsa garden and what varieties of veggies you're going to be growing in yours. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Hi, everyone. Well, I'm out here in the garden today actually doing another pepper harvest. I absolutely love love peppers. It's been a great pepper year for me and I've had a lot of questions on what I do with all the peppers I harvest. Now this is a hot banana pepper plant, very mildly hot. You might have seen the video I posted a few days ago on how to prune pepper plants, but peppers will overwinter very well and this plant is probably just about due for pruning, so I'm going to harvest everything off of it. Put a couple more down here. Oh, there's one hiding here in the oregano. Let's get that one off. And then I've actually got some other hot peppers in my pepper planter.
Well, I've got a really nice little harvest of peppers today. So let's head inside and I'll show you what I like to do with them to preserve them. Back in the house now with my peppers and what I'm gonna do first, of course, is wash them off. So I'm filling up my sink here um, with a couple inches of water. I'm gonna pour maybe a fourth a cup or so of distilled white vinegar in my water and this just helps kill the bugs. Really wash them nice and clean. So I'm gonna let these sit for about 10 minutes in the water here and then rinse them off and lay them on the top dry. Okay, my peppers are now nice and clean. I'm just giving them a little rinse. Lay them out here on the towel and I'm just gonna pat them dry with another dish towel. And then this is so easy, especially if you're really quick, you're in a hurry, you don't have even have time to cut your peppers up or worry about blanching them or anything like that. But all I'm gonna do now is just throw them in a freezer bag. I'm not gonna cut them, I'm not gonna seed them, I'm not gonna core them, I'm not gonna do anything so I don't have time today. So I'm just gonna throw them in a bag and I'm gonna throw all the hot ones and sweet ones in together because what I like to do with these is make pepper jelly. That's my absolutely favorite thing to do with my garden peppers. So you wanna go back and check out that video. I'll put a pop-up link above, but it's super easy. And especially this time of year, it really makes nice Christmas gifts. So I've got my peppers in a bag and I'm gonna write on them that it's a sweet, hot mix. Peppers, which is obvious, anyone who can see it. And I'm gonna write sweet, hot, mix. So that way I know I'm not going to throw my hot ones when uh, there's people over that don't like hot peppers. So I'm going to seal them up. Oh, one little tip for sealing them. Grab a straw here. So this is how you can do a little vacuum seal job here on anything you throw in the freezer. You've got your straw. You've got a freezer Ziploc bag, which I'm going to zip almost all the way closed. I'm gonna leave a little gap at the end. You know that if you freeze things, which I tend to do a lot of freezing because it's just a lot easier for me than canning, that the biggest um, thing that spoils your frozen food or that gives you freezer burn is when you get air in there. So here's a little vacuum sealer trick with a straw. I've got my one little Ziploc corner open here. I'm gonna stick my straw in here. And I'm just gonna suck all the air out with the straw. There you go, bingo. I got a nice vacuum sealed bag of peppers. I'm just gonna throw this in my freezer and then pull it out whenever I'm ready to do a little bit more with it. So there you have it, quick, easy pepper freezing preserving tip. Hopefully this helped you um, take care of some of those peppers that you might still have out in your garden. And comment below, let me know what you'd like to make out of your garden fresh peppers. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hi everyone, check this out. those absolutely gorgeous colors, the reds, the greens, the purples, the oranges. And if you've already harvested your peppers and you're already into the winter time, you want to stay tuned for this video because today we're going to harvest some peppers and you're going to feel like you're in summer again. Now I have the majority of my pepper plants here in the central planter in my garden. It's been a super long hot summer and a long hot fall. The peppers have absolutely thrived. So I'm going to start right off the bat here by harvesting my favorite pepper of all time. Jimmy Nardello. This is an absolutely gorgeous pepper and look at the color variations. It goes from green to red. You can really pretty much harvest these peppers at any stage that you like. I've got several that are ready on this plant today. And the cool thing is, look at this, more blossoms, which means more peppers. Now I do have my peppers divided into this side being sweet peppers, the other side being hot peppers, because sometimes they do cross pollinate. And then you get kind of a sweet pepper that's supposed to be a hot pepper or vice versa. These are a sweet banana pepper. These are so pretty. I love those colors, love the color variation. And it's amazing how the same type of pepper on the same plant can look so different. These ones almost look like a Jimmy Nardello. The next plant is a gorgeous black Hungarian pepper. It's also a sweet pepper. And look at this beautiful, beautiful color. And this plant has absolutely gorgeous flowers too. Look at these flowers, aren't they pretty? I'm leaving some of them on here to kind of wrinkle up a little bit, be a little bit overripe. And these ones are perfect for seed saving. Loaded down. These are such cute little peppers. Look at this, shaped like little pumpkins. Aren't these cute? 
I got these seeds from Baker Creek Seed Company. I'll put a link in the video description below in case you're interested in growing them in your garden too. I just can't wait to grill these up for dinner tonight. Oh, they're so, so tasty. Now one thing I like to do too is stake up my pepper plants just to give them a little bit of support. Here I just have a store-bought tomato cage. This one is just staked up with a regular old wood steak. And these are still green. I don't even remember what kind of peppers these are, but I'm gonna leave those on and move on to the next one here, which I believe this is one of my favorite peppers this season. California Wonder, and these are power producers. Oh my goodness, they're beautiful peppers. Look at that, look at that fun shape. Isn't that cool? A couple more back here, and these are just so prolific and super, super tasty. Take a look at this one. Don't be too worried if you see that on your peppers. That's just sun scald. Because of the hot weather, you can just cut it off and eat it super delicious. If you guys are enjoying this as much as I am, isn't this fun? Look at all these peppers. Sunshine chilies. This makes me happy seeing these guys. Wait till you see this next pepper. They're small but mighty. These are Thai chili peppers and boy do they pack a punch. Green ones, red ones, Flowers, this plant is loaded. This next pepper plant is a Jimmy Nardello pepper. And although this is my hot pepper side, these Jimmy Nardellos are sweet peppers. And this plant has been in here for about three years. And if you do live in a mild winter climate, it does bring up a good point, is you can overwinter your pepper plants. Now this plant I've trimmed back every year and it just keeps on going. Even in cold winter climates, you can prune down your pepper plants almost to the ground, cover them with some shredded leaf mulch, and a lot of times they'll overwinter, and then you'll have a jump in the springtime when it comes to your pepper plants. But you can see a lot of these peppers are wrinkled up, ready for seed saving. I've left them on the vine just a little bit longer. We've got some green ones coming on though. Lots and lots of red ones, so this plant should keep producing for me well into the winter months. Look at this, isn't this fun? Green peppers in November. Those I'm definitely gonna leave on. So let's get this plant harvested. This is so exciting. I love these peppers. Okay, these are some other hot pepper varieties. I honestly don't remember the names of these, but these are kind of a medium heat and great for salsas. We've been eating these for salsas all summer long. And one thing I do like to do with my peppers that helps them keep producing over a long season is really give them an end of the season pepper boost. And I just did that with this garden bed. Amended it with some more garden soil, some compost, some organic fertilizer, put some more worm castings and worm tea in. And it really helped keep them producing through the heat. These are really cute little red peppers. I love them. This plant is loaded. I'm actually gonna leave some on the plant because like I said earlier, I love seeing the color in the garden. When I move over here to the poblanos, the poblanos have a nice mild heat. These are your typical um, chili riano peppers, absolutely gorgeous peppers. And I've got a bunch on this plant. It is just loaded down. Now I do like to freeze these so I can just pop them into a freezer bag hole and then pull them out when I'm ready to make pepper jelly or salsa or make chili rianos, put in a casserole. So cute and I love the different shapes. Look at that. It looks like a fish mouth. Thanks for hanging out here with me for my harvest. Now if you guys were here, I'd be putting you to work. Any volunteers? This is a California wonder pepper again. And these peppers just don't stop. Plant is loaded down. And let me see if there's more flowers coming on. Yes, there are more flowers. Maybe getting some more peppers here soon. But these we love on the grill. They're also good for stuffing because they're a nice thick walled pepper. One of my favorite ways to eat these is to slice up eggplant and grill it. Grill the peppers, put some goat cheese on top of the eggplant and the grilled peppers on top of that. Oh, so good, you guys gotta try that. One more pepper left to harvest here on the California Wonder Plant and camera guy is practically standing in the fountain to get this shot. Way to go camera guy. These are the black Hungarian peppers again. This is so much fun. I just love 
coming out here and harvesting. Well, what a fun pepper harvest. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. 100% organic, beautiful colors. It's so rewarding to grow my own food. Comment below. Let me know if you still have peppers growing in your garden or if you're planning on overwintering any. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make pepper jelly. Now pepper jelly is one of my all time favorite recipes to make for my garden fresh peppers. I've got a freezer full over here to use. It's perfect timing, super delicious, a lot of fun to give away for gifts any time of the year. And something really special about this recipe, not only is it really quick to prepare, but it's a low sugar pepper jelly recipe. In fact, you can use any type of sweetener, honey, agave, even a fruit juice concentrate, stevia, anything like that. It uses about half the amount of sweetener that most jelly recipes use. So today I'm going to show you how to can it in these really pretty jelly jars. Again, really nice for gifts. Now, if you've never canned before, don't let that scare you because I am going to show you how to do it without any special canning equipment, just using the basic supplies you already have in your kitchen. So let's go over the ingredients, the equipment and supplies you're going to need, and then we'll get started. Now there's only four ingredients involved in this recipe, so it's really quick and easy. So first of all, I'm using pure cane sugar today. So I've got my sugar separated into two separate containers. I have a larger bowl with four cups of sugar, a smaller bowl with two thirds cup sugar. I'm gonna be using apple cider vinegar. I have two and two thirds cup in this canning jar here. Then of course the star of the show is the peppers. I have some peppers from the garden that have been in my freezer actually, finely chopped. Of course, I have to put my beautiful whole peppers out here as well too, and I'll show you a little bit more in just a moment on a really super easy way to chop those up. And here we have our pectin. Now, I really like this pectin. I've been using it for a couple of years. It's called Pomona's Universal Pectin. It's natural, no preservatives in it, and it uses the gelling power of a calcium powder to make the jelly gel. Okay, so the equipment you need is very basic, so I'm just going to go over that real quick and what you need to do to prepare to can your jelly. First off, you're going to need about six or eight of these eight ounce little jelly jars, which you can get pretty much anywhere, Target, Walmart, or even on Amazon. I'll put links in the video description below. And you're going to need these canning rings and the canning lids, which is really important that you buy a brand new pack of canning lids because you want to get a really good seal on your canning jars because that's what's going to help your jelly stay preserved um, when, you're, when it's sitting on your shelf. So I've actually got my jelly jars in the dishwasher to sterilize them, to keep them warm till I'm ready to add my hot liquid. I've got my rings and my lids boiling here on the back of my stove to sterilize them and keep them hot until I'm ready to use them. I've got a medium sized stock pot, which I'm going to make my jelly in and a nice big stock pot, which is going to double as my water bath canner. Now I I've only had to make a really small modification to make it work as a water bath canner. I've had it nice and hot here. I'm going to boil it on the stove, filled it with water and I've just folded up a dish towel and placed it in the bottom before I started boiling the water. And you know, a canner usually has like a little rack on the bottom and which helps keep the jelly jars from coming in contact with the hot stock pot. So that's what this will double as and that way my jars don't shatter in the heat. So it's pretty much all there is to it. There's a couple other very basic supplies you'll need like a couple of kitchen towels, a wooden spoon, a pair of tongs, a pair of scissors and a funnel. So let's get started. Before we get into actually cooking up the jelly, I wanted to give you a little tip on cutting up your peppers. Now this bowl here has some peppers in it that I took out of the freezer last night and pulled up in my blender and I think it looks really pretty with all the different color peppers. And I also have a plate that has some whole peppers on it where this is where I wanted to show you my little tip. Now these peppers have been in the freezer. I froze them whole. If you missed that video that I posted a couple days ago, I'll put a pop-up link above. You definitely want to check them out because it's a super easy way to freeze your peppers peppers. But what you do when you take them out of the freezer, you can tell they're kind of soft and mushy. So they're really good to use in these kind of recipes. So I like to just take my scissors and just snip off the top here so I can get them cored and seeded. And this one happens to be a sweet pepper, but if you're cutting up these hot peppers here, you definitely want to wear gloves or you're going to be sorry later, your hands are going to be burning. So I just cut these in half and it's so much easier than using a knife. So snip them in half. And then you can see the seeds and everything inside. I just kind of pull that out, put that into a bowl, and then I can just throw this right into my blender. 
So with the hot ones, you'll cut them, seed them, and then make sure you cut out all of that inside membranes and seeds, unless you want a super fire hot jelly. In that case, you can just leave them in. The first step in making our jelly is to prepare our pectin. So let me just tell you a little bit about Pomona's Universal Pectin. It actually uses the power of calcium powder to create the gel in the jelly rather than the sugar content. So that's what helps you be able to cut back on the sweetener. So inside this package are two other smaller packages. We have our pectin, which this is a citrus pectin, by the way. And we have a packet with our calcium powder. Now, you want to go ahead and prepare this ahead of time. So what I've done is I've taken a half teaspoon of this, put it in my canning jar with a half a cup of water, just shake it up, set it aside, and this will actually last in your refrigerator for a couple of months. So if we don't use it all in today's recipe, you'll have it down the road to use in another jelly recipe. Now, this I got at my local health food store, so check locally to see if you can find it. And I believe it's also available on Amazon, so I'll put a link in the video description below so that you can get it to make some really nice low sugar jelly. Now, the next step is to add three teaspoons of the pectin powder to my smaller two-thirds cup bowl of sugar. I'm just gonna mix it in. So we're over at the stove now. I've got my big stock pot, which is doubling as my water bath counter going. It's boiling. I've got my smaller stock pot all turned on. What I'm going to do first is boil the peppers and the apple cider vinegar together. So I have a nice little mixture here of both sweet and hot peppers. Now if you like things a little bit more spicy, you want to add a few more hot peppers in. But the nice thing about it is, is when you cook these down, they soften a little bit and it really takes some of the heat out. So I'll pour these in my pan. Just dump these in here. I always love to hear that nice sizzle. See the beautiful color of the peppers. And then I'm going to add my two and two thirds cup of apple cider vinegar. I'll just let this boil for about five minutes just to get the peppers softened. My peppers are boiling away and the house absolutely smells amazing. It's filling the house. I cannot wait to taste this pepper jelly. Our next step is to add our calcium water. So I'm just going to give this a shake and we're going to add four teaspoons of the calcium water. And then I can actually save the rest of this calcium water in the refrigerator for a later use. Then we're going to let this boil for a couple more minutes just to get it good and combined. So the next step is to add our small bowl of sugar that we've mixed our pectin into. I'm going to stir this and make sure it gets completely dissolved. Next step is to add my larger bowl of my four cup sugar and we're going to stir it pretty vigorously for about two minutes so the sugar completely dissolves. So once the sugar is good and dissolved, we're going to boil this for about five minutes and the mixture will start to thicken as it boils. So my jelly has been boiling away for about five minutes. Looking really good and smelling really good. You can see it's getting a little bit thicker. All that pectin is starting to do the work. So now I'm just going to remove it from the heat and bring it over to the side here where I've got my canning jars out of my dishwasher. They still feel nice and warm. You definitely do not want to ladle this into cold jars because the jars will crack. And we're going to go ahead and get them ladled into the jars. So I've got my ladle here and I've got my funnel. Now, if you do happen to have a canning funnel with a wider mouth, that's definitely a lot easier. But if you don't have that, just use a regular kitchen funnel. So I'm just going to put my funnel over my jar. Then do be careful because obviously the jello, jelly is super, super hot. So you take your ladle and just ladle it into your jar. With the smaller mouth funnel, it might be a little bit hard to for the jelly to all sink down in there. But I like to take a little shish kebab stick, just poke it down in there. And you want to leave about a fourth inch of space at the top just to allow the jelly to seal. So you can kind of eyeball it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now I'm just going to grab my lids and my rings out of my little pan here on the back of my stove. And I've been keeping these hot here. So I'm just going to grab these and throw them into the bowl so I can bring them over here and seal up my jars. Okay, the next step and a very important step is to make sure you wipe around the lid of your little jar here just to make sure there's no like jelly residue or anything like that because that will prevent it from getting a really good seal. 
and be careful because the jars are really hot at this point and just so you know as the jelly cools it will start to gel more so if it's a little bit runny when you put it into the jar which it will be don't worry now we're going to put our lid on and our ring on and just finger tighten it here you don't want it to be super super tight but there you have it so this made about six jars of pepper jelly so i'm really thrilled with that now the nice thing is if you don't have as many peppers as the recipe calls for you could cut it in half if you have a lot of peppers you could always double the recipe so our jars are sealed and now it's time to put our jars into my pot of boiling water here now again this is not canning 101 in fact i usually freeze most everything this is one of the things that i do like to can but we'll get it going here in our pot of boiling water so we get a nice tight seal on our jars i'm just using regular kitchen tongs here and i'm going to grab my jar and you can see my cloth that i put on the bottom of my jar is kind of puffing up in the boiling water but that's okay no worries about that so i'm just going to lift up my jar and set it down in the boiling water here and we're going to boil these for about 10 minutes so it's time to pull them out so i'm going to take my tongs and very carefully reach in and definitely since these are not actual canning tongs but kitchen tongs just support them with a towel or your hot pad as you pull them out and then just set them over here on the towel six absolutely gorgeous jars of pepper jelly here i absolutely love it these are a nice, beautiful red color, but the fun thing about it is you can really customize it depending on the types of peppers you have. Hot, sweet, different colors, so your jars can look different every single time you make it. And these are absolutely gorgeous Christmas gifts, holiday gifts, any time of the year. You can either, even cover the ring underneath the ring with like a really pretty piece of fabric or whatever to make it a little bit more decorative. But the important thing is, Let's get to the taste test. Now, here I have some pepper jelly over a block of cream cheese. This makes an absolutely fabulous, app quick appetizer to bring to a party. People rave about it. So let's dig in. Oh, this looks so delicious. I'm just gonna cut off a little chunk of the cream cheese. The jelly is just poured over it. Really couldn't get simpler, couldn't get quicker. I mean, look how yummy that looks. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try this. Absolutely delicious. Mmm, wow. <laughs> this really has a kick to it. So there you have it, a really quick, simple, inexpensive way to preserve your garden fresh peppers without any special equipment. Let me know if you try this stuff. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. We are so hooked on it. And believe me, if you wanna give these as Christmas gifts, you better not open a jar, because once you open it, it's gone. So comment below, let me know if you're going to try it and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any garden updates. And we are starting our indoor garden series next week. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Mm. Wow, this is so good.